Hello and welcome again to Mixers Insight YouTube channel. This time I will talk about Omnitronic TRM202 Mark III mixer. I've seen many extreme opinions about this mixer. So let's talk about the facts. The mixer opens up easily and there is good access to all boards. It's quite simple to notice Alps Blue Velvet potentiometers. Here the mixer is no different than many much more expensive ones. The power supply is isolated from other boards with a grounded metal sheet. It helps to reduce noise emission. As you can see block diagram is very simple. Let's take a look at every board. Power supply is, no surprise, isolated DC-DC converter. The topology is classic, it's a flyback converter. The AC voltage from mains gets rectified and then it's transformed to plus minus 15 volts DC power rails. You may have noticed some missing components on the board. This power supply is made on template designed for many Omnitronic devices and the full version has extra plus 48 volts phantom power supply for studio mixing consoles. Sharing the common power supply board with other devices makes the production volume higher and that means lowering the cost of a single unit. Now let's jump to input-output board. The layout is pretty busy here. The board has 4 inputs and 4 outputs, 2 balanced and 2 unbalanced. The active circuitry on this board is responsible for phono amplification and balancing the output signal. The phono preamp is a classic popular solution, single stage active. It's based on 4580 op amp and I didn't see any other op amp in this mixer. Channel board does 4 important things. It selects the phono line input. It allows you to equalize the signal in a subtle way using Baxandel circuitry. It sends the signal to Cubas with a switch. And it allows you to control the channel volume with Alps Blue Velvet potentiometer. This mixer has classic rotary mixer architecture and it doesn't have the extra gain knob. The channel signal level is adjusted only by volume control without any trimming option. It makes the signal path shorter. Again we can see the 4580 op-amps. They are low-cost op-amps that you can see in many audio devices. The main thing that differs them from TL072 op-amps is bipolar input. Signals from two channel boards are getting summed in master board. Main functions of master board are summing the signals, controlling the master booth and microphone volume, routing the Q and master signals to onboard headphone amplifier. Ok, you got me. There is one different op-amp than 4580. It's 4556. High current op-amp that serves here as a headphone amplifier. It can handle this task thanks to high current output. Also, thanks to larger THT package, it can dissipate more heat. I didn't mention one more important function. Metering. Meters are LED based and allow to monitor master and Q signal. Op-amps and most passive components are in surface mount packages. This not only helps to reduce manufacturing costs, but also offers several advantages over through-hole technology, such as lower lead inductance and improved electromagnetic compatibility due to a denser layout. Let's talk a bit longer about the isolator. Omnitronic mixer is equipped with 18 dB per octave master isolator. 18 dB per octave, what does it mean? You will know everything in two minutes. The thing I definitely want to comment here are unknown brand film capacitors. I've seen those green bastards somewhere else. Apart from this spot, all I see here is very standard. High quality Alp spots, couple of op amps, resistors and capacitors that form a 3-band active crossover. The core of isolator EQ is crossover. Using crossovers you can chop the audio band to pieces. In this case, three pieces. This type of EQ allows you to control the volume of each piece separately. Thanks to this, we can fully eliminate frequency bands. There are two most important parameters of isolator crossovers. Crossover frequency and slope steepness. The steeper the slope, the more precise frequency cut we get. You'll hear this effect soon. 
it's important to mention that in analog world it's impossible to achieve infinite steepness and cut off the frequency band without any leakage. It's very hard to describe those things with words, so let's listen to it. We've got here three band software isolator. It allows us to change the crossover frequencies and select the slope steepness. I can change the volume of the bands I can completely cut off the band I can change the crossover frequency and slope steepness. The steeper the slope, the less signal leaks from the neighboring band. Again, you can hear the effect of changing the crossover frequency. And steepness. I hope you got the concept of isolator EQ. Now, measurements. Let's start with THD. The procedure is the same as in previous episode. 2V RMS input, master knob to maximum, we raise the level to 0dB on the matter of channel volume knob. Ladies and gentlemen, the cheapest rotary mixer on the market has THD better than minus 100dB. I would call this score excellent. Let's push it till the red lights and see what happens. Minus 93 dB. It's also very good. According to this data, this mixer is definitely more on the transparent side. During the measurements, I notice one thing I would call a bug. There are two line inputs in this mixer. One is dedicated to line signals and one is shared with a phono module. The shared line input has 30 dB worse distortion than the dedicated one. I was also quite curious about the frequency response of a low-cost isolator. The deviation is close to 1 dB, it's pretty flat and I expected much worse performance. Analog isolators never have perfectly flat frequency response because of misalignment of bands. They never add perfectly due to component value variations in the crossover filters. The tighter component tolerances you use, the flatter frequency response you get and tighter tolerance mean always higher component price. Speaking of price, for this price this mixer is a killer. Thanks to modern technology and smart manufacturing process, you are able to get excellent performance without selling your liver. Please let me know about your experience with this mixer. I hope that I help to clear some technical doubts about this product. If you have any doubts or questions, I will be waiting for you in the comments section. Thanks for watching and see you next time.